Hi, my name is Miguel Ramos and I'm going to pitch you my idea um, about a delicate um, comedy uh, focused on the hospitality industry. Uh, the title is 10% Service Charge and it's done by me. First of all, the logline. Um, an exemplary server from a fairly posh restaurant faces his most challenging chance to get a good tip when an old friend from uni comes in for an ordinary Sunday lunch with the girl he has been dating with for five years. As he finds out, the waiter, thanks to Facebook, that it is her birthday and his football lover boyfriend is about to miss it once again. 10% service charge will allow you to see the hospitality industry from a new perspective and will make you wonder why is your server being so nice to you next time you book a table uh, at your favorite local eatery on a Friday evening. This is like the premise. Now, let's see the story on a um, more depth. Uh, first, our guest list, our characters. The three main ones are the server, Steven and Anna. Server is the server, and his role is like a cool guy, and the, he finished his studies on business management a few years ago, but then he realized that to become a manager, it was too much of an effort for him. So he realized that just living as a server with the tips and his wages would be enough for him to survive, and it would be like enough of an, of an effort for him. Steven is uh, a lot. That's the way I would describe Stephen. He's a good guy, he's a nice man, but he's, again, a lad. He loves to talk about girls, cars, and football, as a good lad would do. Uh, oh yeah, he works in a um, head office of a, of a big corporation, and his father found this uh, job for him. So again, it says uh, pretty much about him. Anna is Stephen's um, girlfriend. She's a nursery, she is very intelligent, empathic, and a patient woman. She loves Stephen, even though everybody is trying to make her see that he is just an asshole. Then uh, we also have the colleague, um, the old customer, and a bunch of extras that will help to make the story, uh, the story uh, moving forward. Uh, now, to see the story in an easy way, I divide it into the three acts because uh, that's the way I've created my story. On the first act, the appetizers, would be the 25% of the total run of the um, short film, which, by the way, would be like 10 minutes, approximately. So in the first act, uh, act, we'll see the presentation of the restaurant and the server as well. So we'll see the location and our protagonist. And we'll also see the couple, which are, again, Stephen and Anna, that are coming into the restaurant for this lovely meal. The incited incident will take place when the server goes to take a break, uh, having a ciggy, and he tries to find Anna on her Facebook, on his Facebook, and he sees that it's her birthday. And he's like, oh shit, if I'm gonna get a good tip, I better do well with this. Uh, on the second act, the main curses, which is the 50% of our running time, the server will begin with his uh, quest. His quest, again, is to make sure uh, to try to make Steven see that it's her birthday and he forgot it again. Uh, that's like his quest. Then Steven, uh, to put like, some complication into the story, Steven will think that he's trying to flirt with Anna because he's been so nice to her and offering drinks and extra things that is like, oh, what's going on? That's the complication uh, for the story. Uh, again, the, the server will have to remember himself that he is doing everything to get a good tip at the end. So even though he's going to struggle to make Steven see that it's her birthday, he will be like, okay, you do it for the tip, you do it for the tip, to make him, uh, again, move forward. And then the climax will come when Steven will not, will not be able to take all the attention and will explode against the server, like, hey, why are you being like this with my girl? Da -da -da -da. Are you trying to feel with her? Da -da -da -da. Like a good lad again would do. Uh, on the third act, which is 25% of the story, uh, we have the resolution. Um, after this climax, a woman will come into the restaurant with a birthday cake, and then the tension will be interrupted. Uh, the server will go to grab the cake, and he suddenly click 
like, okay, let's bring a cake out and then all the tension will be gone. Then the guy will realize it's her birthday and everything will be like happy ever after. Uh, yeah, so we get to resolution. He comes out with the cake. Everybody is very happy. They are enjoying the cake. He saved the situation and he is going to do the 10% service charge, which makes him very happy. Uh, at the end, as it's getting too cheesy, I decided to put this little joke twist. Because uh, um, Anna turns up, she's allergic to nuts. And on the cake, there are some nuts. So the last sentence we're going to hear is something like, oh, honey, is there any nuts on this cake? And then we see all the credits go. That's basically the autopsy of the story. Up next is the restaurant, the location, the set. Uh, Spritz and Bits is the name that I found for the restaurant. I don't know why, but I think it sounds cool. Spritz is an Italian drink, very famous on the north of Italy. It's an Italian restaurant, so it makes sense. Then Bits, it just sounds like Bits, but cooler. So Spritz and Bits is my restaurant. Uh, the floor, so in terms of set, we'll be constructing, building uh, one set where we can see all the different parts. And then it's a back door as well. So the floor would be something like that. We have the reception and then all the floor full of people. And then the table, which is gonna be a good, um, a nice table that the server found for them with a booth that they can be sitting on. Uh, so apart from the floor and the table, we got the reception, which will be over there and also the back door which is where our server goes to enjoy, uh, to enjoy his uh, Siggy breaks, uh, which, again, will help him to calm down and to um, motivate himself again, like tip, 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 tip. Think of the tip. The bus stand is uh, also located uh, on the floor, and it's where he goes to write some message in the um, specials menu, which is also part of the story, like a little joke. I draw uh, that as well. Now, let's talk about how did I get to this idea. It took me a <laughs> long time and a big, big effort to my silly brain to come to this idea. Uh, so my first idea was focused on an um, office environment. I don't know why, but one day I just had this idea. And I thought it could work, but then I started to realize it, it, it will never work. So I um, sent it to a friend, and she was really honest with me, and she told me, Miguel, this idea is crap, and you know it, which you know, destroyed me, but at the same time made me stronger. So uh, after this, I had my creative uh, crisis. It was really bad, like, I don't know, am I gonna be able to do it? Da, 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 da. And then I asked for some friends for you know, advices, and I got uh, two very good advices. The first one is, Miguel, think simple. You don't need like big things in your story, just think simple. And the second, uh, second uh, advice that I got is write about something you have close, about something you know. And uh, you know, that's why I have uh, this um, <coughs> restaurant environment, because I've been working there for a long time and I know like how it works a little bit. Then, to get the idea of the birthday thing, uh, I thought in my times in Liverpool when I was a server, and the thing that I enjoyed the most was singing Happy Birthday because we had a little band and we were like releasing all that tension that we have uh, you know, on the service. It was a like, really good time. So that's why the birthday cake and the birthday uh, idea came to build the whole story up. And also, I thought like, okay, what if the guy forgets that it's her birthday? And then with all this, I started to build um, the idea up. In terms of structure, as, as I said before, I have created a classical three-act screenplay with, uh, well, as I told about before, with an exciting incident, a quest, complication, climax, resolution, and a final twist slash joke with an art thing. Uh, now, let's talk about how did I research, how did I prepare myself for this. As I said, I've been working for two years and a half in the hospitality industry. So I, I, I know the subject, I know how it works, and I know the kind of dialogue that you can have it. Uh, so it helped me a lot to, you know, once I had the idea, it helped me a lot to create the, um, 
uh, script quite fast. Um, also, becoming a professional server in my current job uh, also helped me to do things like more interesting for this um, particular um, script. And then I got a few inspirational references, which are Campo Frio TV commercials. Campo Frio is a Spanish brand. They produce like chicken and you know, like slices for sandwiches, but they always produce very, very good um, commercials using emotions and sarcasm. That is something that I really like as well, like irony, sarcasm, and all that. Also, I found Draw Cards, which is a short film. Uh, it's a very, very, very good piece of art. And it's really fresh and really funny. And it, well, it's one of the finalists of the Top Fest uh, Australian 24 Film Festival. Uh, if you don't know this short, this short movie, you, I think you should watch it. Uh, again, as a conclusion, i just like to say that a good story does not require big explosions, aliens and organs. And this is what I'm trying to accomplish with my um, script. Any questions? Um, the relationship between uh, why does the server want to really want to help, help Stephen's server? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't mention it in my, my, my presentation, but really, um, Stephen and the server know each other from uni. So they've been doing the same course, the, the same degree of business management. And they also did, uh, they mentioned in, in the script, they also did a um, placement together at Tesco's head office in Chestnut, London. Yeah, thank you very much for your question, Dan. Um, well, the way I see the image is quite like the way the restaurant that I've been using to research this um, is, the way it looks. It's low light, uh, warm colors, and yeah, that's the way we look. Then in terms of costume, I haven't thought too much about that, but it's gonna be like nice brands, nice colors, fresh, Nice and clean. Any more questions? Yeah? So, like, would the target audience be the same as the characters, like middle class? Maybe? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, my target audience uh, is like people on their 20s, their late 20s, uh, educated people that like, you know, like fresh, funny, and cool stuff. From this group? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, I said Ditsbury or Tolton are uh, places uh, where my short film can be broadcasted. Any more questions? Yeah, Alison. Uh, uh, the running time uh, is going to be about 10 minutes ish. At the moment, it's 11 uh, pages of my script, but it can be reduced uh, if we work out how. Yeah. Uh -huh. As I just said, um, this might be something that I can do, working together with the tutors and with all my colleagues at the Manchester Film School. Any more questions? Uh, yeah, then. Uh, Alison, anybody? Uh, in terms of set, so you, um, it's in a restaurant, but uh, do you use the warm restaurant or is it just the one, the table away, the cup? No, I just need a reception area, like a little desk with a computer and a telephone. Then the table that we're going to use with a booth, a few more tables, like, you know, to make it look busy. And then the bus stand where the guy goes to take things and the back door, which is separate. And we can actually use the back door of the studio here at the Manchester Film School. So I think it's quite doable. <laughs> 